Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're gonna work on one that I've really been dying to get to and that's integration by parts. Now, of course, there's a couple of different notations you may see for integration by parts. You may see this one or you may see this one over here on the right. Both of them are integration by parts and we're gonna go over the big idea of how this works and of course the notation I like to use. So let's get into the big idea of exactly what this method is. The big idea is to take a fairly complicated looking integral and turn it into something much nicer. And you can kind of tell that from the formula in that we're starting with an integral over here on the left and when we're done, we'll still end up with an integral, but it will be nicer for us. So as a quick example to this, you know, maybe we have something like the integral of two X multiplied by sine of X. And we can see as we're unpackaging this, we're going to end up with some versions of that same function, but also its derivative. And as for the other piece, we'll end up with its antiderivative uh, in a couple of places. So if we're just blindly following this formula, here's what's going on. So in the first part, I'm taking the 2x, and it is still a 2x. And then here, I'm starting off with the derivative of g and turning it into just regular old g. So what's happening here is I'm taking an antiderivative. So let's see, the antiderivative of sine, that came from a negative cosine. So negative cosine of x, there's that piece. All right, and then we move on to the integral to see if this has gotten any nicer. Uh, so 2x, moving to the inside here, we need to take its derivative. Derivative of 2x is just a regular old 2, so there's that. And we'll multiply this by the, again, the antiderivative. So here's our negative cosine. All right. So did we accomplish our goal? Is this any nicer than what we started with? And, you know, let's clean this up. We can see that, yes, it's a lot better. We can move this negative sign right out front. So there's a negative 2x multiplied by a cosine of x. Uh, we can combine these two negative signs to get a positive. Two is a constant. We can move that out as well. So now on the right-hand side, we're just looking at the integral of just a cosine of x. And we can do that in you know, one nice and easy step. So we've taken this integral, which has a couple of functions being multiplied, and we've really reduced it to really just one integral with a single cosine on the inside. All right, since this guy is almost done, let's just go ahead and finish it off. So plus a two antiderivative of cosine. So that comes from sine plus C and we're done. Now, since the notation can be kind of complicated, kind of cumbersome here, I actually like to use an alternate notation for integration by parts. So I like to use this notation where I'm taking the integral of U times DV and that's equal to UV minus the integral of V DU. Now, at first, it seems like we're losing a lot of information, but the reason why I like this particular notation here is it allows me to better keep track of what's a derivative and antiderivative as I'm going along. And plus, this has a really great way of memorizing the form. You can memorize this as ultraviolet minus snake voodoo. If you remember that, then essentially you have the formula in your back pocket. So again, that's ultraviolet minus snake voodoo, and just like that, you've memorized integration by parts. All right, so let's see how this new notation works uh, when we're actually using it in practice. So in my integral here, we want to identify some piece where it's easy to take a derivative. So like this 2x piece, I can take its derivative fairly easily. So we're gonna call that our u. Now we'll also identify another piece where it's fairly easy to take its antiderivative. So this is what we're gonna be calling dv. And what we do with each of these pieces is we end up kind of writing them off to the side here. So u is equal to 2x. And then we can say that dv is equal to sine of x dx. And what we're going to do is we're gonna move forward with this one. We're gonna take its derivative and we're going to move backwards with this one. We're going to take its antiderivative. And I really like to do this first before really diving too much into the formula. That way I have all of my pieces, okay? So the derivative of u, I can say du, is equal to 2dx. So there we've just taken our derivative, derivative of x dx, all looking great. On the other side here, now we're taking an antiderivative. So v equals negative cosine of x, and that's it. 
Uh, if you want to see what's going on a little bit more on, on the right side here, you can almost imagine starting with V equals negative cosine and taking its derivative, and then you'll get that DV equals sine of X DX. All right, so we have all of our pieces in here. Now we can just run up here and put it into our formula. So what does this equal? Well, ultraviolet would be our U and our V piece. So there's our 2X, and there's our negative cosine of X minus snake voodoo v du uh, so negative cosine of x to dx and so we end up with the exact same pieces that we did before just a little bit easier to keep track of them and now we can start to rewrite this pulling out any extra constants combining negative signs and end up in the same exact place that we did last time all right so you'll see me often use this notation, uh, again, just because it's a little, a little bit easier for us to remember what the form is and making sure all of our pieces get in there. All right, so let's move on to a, examples and uh, see this in action. So for the first of these examples, I have the integral of t squared multiplied by e to the t. So we're looking for a piece where it's fairly good to take the derivative, another piece where we can take the antiderivative, uh, and again, that's not too bad. Uh, maybe as a side goal and also in the back of our mind, we want this to get simpler as we go along. So here it looks like a good choice for u because I know its derivative is 2t. And e to the t dt, this looks like a great choice for our dv. Because if I take antiderivatives of e to the t, I'll just get another e to the t, another e to the t. Um, you know, don't stress too much about, you know, exactly what you should choose for your u and your dv. If you happen to choose the wrong thing and it gets more complicated, it gets more ugly as you go along, then you can just go back and, and switch what you're choosing for your U and your DV. So there's our E of T, D, T. All right, like before, let's go ahead and move forward with this one. So the derivative of U, DU, is equal to 2T, DT. The antiderivative over here so this came from a V and an E to the T, All right? So we have our pieces. Now we want to write down our integral. So ultraviolet T squared E to the T minus snake voodoo. So E to the T DU times 2T DT. So we started with this integral and after the integration by parts, it's already looking a lot simpler. We've re reduced that t squared into just a 2t, and we can start to move out constants and maybe combine negative signs if we have any negative signs. So let's see, let's grab that constant, grab the two. Uh, the t still has to stick around there, and I'm just gonna rearrange those so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, now we've done integration by parts once. It's already looking a lot better, uh, but this is kind of a neat method. You can do it again if you think it'll make it even simpler still, and sure enough, now we can go ahead and choose the t equal to u. And we'll choose the e of t dt again for our dv. And we can see what this will uh, uh, make it into. So let's see. Now we have u equals t. So its derivative would equal just dt. And over here on the other side, we have dv equals e to the t dt. So its antiderivative is just the e to the t. Nice. All right, so applying it a second time, what is that going to look like? Well, let's go ahead and move back up here, see what we got. So we have this uh, earlier stuff. Got to keep all of that. And this integral is where we're really applying that integration by parts. So here's where we're going to start it again. So ultraviolet minus snake voodoo. So ultraviolet, I have t e to the t minus snake voodoo e to the t dt nice and look an even simpler integral now now we've reduced it from t e to the t just to an e to the t all right let's clean this up so that we can actually see where we're going to go from here uh let's see to make this a little bit cleaner let's go ahead and distribute that negative two inside our parentheses We'll eventually get to that integral on the end, but I don't want to lose any negative signs as we're, we're trying to do this. So negative 2t 
e to the t plus a2 uh, integral of e to the t dt. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and take care of that integral on the end there. So t squared e to the t minus 2t e to the t plus 2. And the antiderivative of e to the t is just e to the t. And we can throw on our uh, constant of integration and call this thing done. So yes, it's important to recognize what pieces we're choosing, moving forward with one, moving uh, backwards with the other one, and also recognize that, yeah, we can apply this method more than once to continually simplify our integral and get to an answer. All right, let's go ahead and check out another example. And this one is one of my favorites for integration by parts. Because, you know, sometimes you get to an integral and it's not always clear what you should choose for the u and the dv, especially in this one, when it only looks like we have one piece. You know, what, what exactly do we do with this guy? Uh, well, this one, I like to imagine that there's a one, you know, maybe sitting inside of the integral. And what we're going to do is first choose a, a piece where it's kind of nice to take the um, derivative. And so our choice here is actually going to be our natural log. Since the derivative of the natural log is one over x, it's something that I know I can use that and we're good to go. And as for my dv piece, we'll go ahead and use the one and the dx and call that dv. All right, let's go ahead and follow this up and see what happens. So choosing u equal to my natural log, and I have a derivative as one over x dx. At first, that makes it look more complicated, but just hang in there, it's gonna be okay. Uh, and now on to our other piece. So dv is equal to multiplied by one dx, or just dx. Antiderivative here, v is equal to x. Nice. All right, now we have our pieces. Let's write it out. So ultraviolet, natural log of x multiplied by x minus snake voodoo x times one over x dx. All right, and now we just need to clean this thing up and you can really see that this inside of the integral is gonna be a lot nicer than what we started with. Uh, so I don't want anyone to confuse that x with being inside with my other x, so let's go ahead and rearrange these as x natural log of x minus inside the integral, how x divided by x, so that's just a one. And now we can take this antiderivative. So let's go ahead and move this up uh, over here. We'll say this is x natural log of x minus taking the antiderivative here, we just have x and plus our integration constant. And this guy is done. So the toughest part is sometimes just choosing what is u and what is dv. But once you have them, you can really move forward with this. All right, now there are some tips I have for uh, using integration by parts. And these are some ones that you know are kind of special, so I'm gonna use a new video to really highlight some of the interesting things that happen. The first thing is watch out for integrals that might repeat. Uh, it's not that you're doing the method wrong, you are doing the method correctly. Stuff like sine of x multiplied by e the x is really good for integration by parts, but as you run through it a couple of times, you'll see this integral show up again. Don't worry, that's okay. Again, check out my other video on what to do for integrals that repeat using integration by parts. Also, watch out for integrals that require multiple uses of integration by parts. So something like the integral of x to the sixth multiplied by e to the x. Now this is a perfect example where I'm gonna choose u to be that x to the sixth, but I'm gonna have to choose it as u again and again and again. It's just gonna take a while for it to get simpler. So you know, don't be afraid to use integration by parts on it, but know that there is a better way that you could really tackle this. And that better, better way uh, to do inter, uh, integrations like this faster, if you have to do it multiple times, is to use tabular integration. Tabular integration is just another way to do integration by parts, but it is much, much faster. So uh, check out my other videos on in, uh, tabular integration where we really cover how to do that. It, it takes care of repeated integrals and the ones where you have to do this over and over again. All right? So hopefully that helps out on what integration by parts is and gives you some new tools for your integration toolbox. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit my website over at mysecretmathtutor.com and we'll go ahead and keep plowing through our integration techniques.